And as always, what are our basics? We need to know how to add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, and get them in their proper form. And that's what we're now going to do. And you should find this pretty easy. You, who have just mastered word problems, rate of work, mixture, all that stuff, this is going to be like uh, <laughs> falling off a log. It's going to be so easy. So hang in there. Let's get to work. And you should like this. Now you will find a copy of this in your booklet. And what I'm going to do is teach you how to add exponents, subtract them, multiply them, and divide them. To do that, what I'm going to do is give you two columns, and I'm going to put the way books usually explain how to do this, and then I'm going to give you Metz's rules. And when we get finished, you're going to be able to handle it pretty quickly, I hope. So I guess I need some kind of boundary line down the middle here to separate the two sets of rules. Now, to do this, let's do a problem. Now, we already know how to add monomials because we did that earlier when we were adding polynomials and simplifying. And we already know that. Now, all right, so example, what is 5x to the third plus 2x to the third? How do you do that? Well, remember early in the course I told you that I wanted to call in a monomial. So let's take a different monomial. So let's suppose I got 7x to the fifth. So when I talk about 7x to the fifth, when I talk about the name tag, my definition of a name tag is everything but the number out front, the coefficient. So the name tag is x to the fifth. Now, how do you add these? Well, let's do how we already know. What's five of them and two of them? So in this particular case, if I was adding five of them and two of them, the answer would be seven of them. Answer seven x to the sixth, is that right? No. Apples and apples do not give you bowling balls. All right, if I add apples to apples, I get apples. And when I add x to the thirds to x to the thirds, I don't get something else. I get x to the third. Now, how do we do that problem? We already know how to do this. How do you add? You match them. And it's kind of weird. All our life, to add, we add it. But this exponent is different. It's done differently than anything you've done. There's a different set of rules for this special case. This special case, to add, you don't add. To add, you match. All right, let's look at the book rule. If I got one of these things called x to the a, and I got another one of these things called x to the a, I got one of them, and I got another of them, which gives me two of them. x to the a's and x to the a's give me x to the a's. One and one gives me two. All right, to do the problem. Now, I don't have to spend time here because we've already done this when we were simplifying and doing sign rules. All right, so what you need to do is you need to know what is 8x squared plus 10x. How do you do that? Well, I know you know. You don't do anything. Why? Because addition is a bigot. You can't add x squares to x's. The name tags are different. The name tag here is x squared. The name tag here is x. You can't add x squares to x's. It doesn't work. Now, on the other hand, let's suppose that it was 8x squared and 10x squared. What we want to do is we want to take this polynomial and try to simplify it. And in this case, we can. We turn it into a monomial. 8 of these things called x squared, and 10 of these things called x squared give us 18x squared. Very, very simple. Not a problem. I don't think you're going to have some, any trouble at all with it. Now, let's do one or two with the confusion of signs. So let's suppose I had a negative 5x to the third minus 2x squared minus 3x to the third. And I say simplify. How you do this problem? Well, this is a trinomial that can be turned into a binomial. Let's see. I got the negative 5x cubed and the negative 3x cubed, which gives me a negative 8x cubed, and then I just keep the negative 2x squared. Done. This is a cube. All right? Simplify. Can't go any further because addition is a big one. Incidentally, subtraction is dealing with the negative. Therefore, we're really dealing with both of these at this time. We're looking at addition and subtraction. How do you add them or how do you subtract them? You match them. How do you do that? If the names match, you keep the name and work the coefficients. If the names don't match, you don't do anything. Now, we already know how to do this, so let's barrel right through this without a lot of examples. Let's do one more. So doing one more. So let's suppose we had uh, 5a squared c plus 3ac squared. And I say simplify. 
Can you add that up? Of course not, because a squared c and a c squared are not the same. So therefore, you don't do anything to it. On the other hand, if you had a squared here, can you now add that up? Sure. Now remember, there's not a 1 in front of this c. This is the name tag called a, c, a squared c, and I got five of them. And over here, I got three of them. So when I put it together, I got eight of them. First rule, we already knew it. Let's move on. Second rule, how do you multiply exponents? Well, how would you multiply anything? Gee, it's obvious you must multiply, huh? A pigeon is pigeon-toed. George Washington's white horse was white. Who's buried in Grant's tomb? Grant. And to multiply, you must multiply wrong. Because exponents are special cases. And these special cases need to be treated as such. And to multiply exponents, you don't multiply, you add. Are you serious? Can you be truthful? Is that really true? Why, does that sound stupid? To do this multiplication problem, I add. That's right. No wonder math is confusing. you got to get it straight. All right, here's the book's explanation. How do you multiply x to the a times x to the a? x to the a times x to the a is x to the 2a. If the bases match, you keep that base, and what do you do to these exponents while you multiply here? I mean, isn't that weird? To multiply here, you add a and a and get 2a. I'd rather my rule. How do you multiply them? You add them. Now we need to look at some illustrations and we need to look at plenty of them. But first, let's explore the y. What is x squared times x cubed? Now it only makes sense that x squared times x to the third is x to the sixth. Wrong. Because how do you multiply exponents? To multiply exponents, you add them. Let's see why. x squared is x times x. x cubed is x times x times x. So that means it turned into x times x times x times x times x. And what's the best way to write that? x to the fifth. So you've got to admit that that's right. And so notice that x to the second times x to the third is equal to x to the fifth, not x to the sixth. To do this multiplication problem, I had to add. Boy, that's confusing. We just got to get used to it. Let's look at this multiply. What's x to the eighth y squared times x to the third y to the fifth? And half the world says, half the world says you can't do it because they're confused. Well, it's the addition that's the bigot. Remember, multiplication is a party animal. They're ready to dance and have a party and have a good time no matter who they're with or where they're at. So you can always multiply. Remember that. Multiplication is a party animal. They can always go together. They're always ready to party. They're not shy in any way. It's addition that's the bigot. It's addition that needs its own kind to work. So therefore, we can work this problem. Now, how do you do this? Well, to do it, let's look at the answer and then let's explain. So, look at the x to the 8 times the x to the 3rd. The x to the 8 times x to the 3rd gives me x to the 11. How come? Seems like it ought to be x to the 24. But it's not, because I got 8 x's and I got 3 more x's, which gives me 11. How do you multiply them? Hey, you add them. What's y squared times y fifth? y squared times y fifth is y seven. Take a look at it. That's how you multiply. Now, normally, I'm not going to put the dot here. Normally, to do this problem, we're going to have a parenthesis separating them. So get used to seeing that. But I wanted you to see it with the dot rather they are than that. Now, so to work that problem, how you do it, you get x to the 11th, y to the 7th. All right, let's look at another example. All right, so looking at another example. So let's suppose I got uh, c, v to the 3rd times uh, c to the 5th v to the sixth. Multiply. Alright, how do you do it? Well, hey, first of all, remember, you can do it. This is a party animal. And to do it, we get c to the sixth times v to the ninth. Now, did you miss the c to the sixth if you were doing it yourself? Please notice why. c to the fifth, this is a c to the one. How do you do that? You add the one to the five, which gives you the six. Remember, you can do different terms because multiplication is a party animal, so don't be afraid to do it. You can always multiply. It's a party.
Okay, we need a lot more examples of this, so let me make a few up as we go. All right, so let's suppose I got 5a to the fifth times 2a to the second. Multiply. Now, are you able to multiply here? Certainly, because multiplication is part of the animal. Now, a big place of confusion here is, take a look at this problem. That we got to multiply 5 times 2 twice in this problem. And in both situations, or in either situation, we get a different answer. My goodness, that's confusing. This 5 times 2 is going to be 10. And this 5 times 2 is going to be 7. I wonder why people get confused when they do math. 5 times 2 used to be 10. Now, it's sometimes 10. In this case, it can be 7. When does that occur? Well, that occurs when we got exponents because it's a special case. Exponents, 5 times 2, we add. Why? Because to multiply them, we add them. This 5 times 2 gives me 7. This 5 times 2 gives me 10. This leads to a phrase I'm going to call regular good old numbers. Now, regular good old numbers, how do you add them? You add them. How do you multiply them? You multiply them. Regular good old numbers, you do what you've always done. You just do what it says. To subtract, you subtract. To divide, you divide. It's the exponents that are different. So in this case here, don't get your regular good old numbers mixed up from your exponents. 5 and 2 are regular good old numbers. So how do you multiply 5 times 2? You get 10. But these exponents, 5 and 2, are exponents. So to multiply them, you know, multiply, but you add. So when I go through this, you have to keep that in mind. Not only have to you look at the exponents, but you've got to remember your good old regular good old number rule. And the regular good old number rule means do what you've always done, don't do anything different. But on the exponents, you've got to live up to this new set of rules. What are the rules so far? To add them, you don't add. You match them. How do you add regular good old numbers? So let's do a problem where we're adding. So let's suppose I got uh, 5x to the third plus 2x to the third. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, can we add this up? Yeah, because the exponents match. Now, when the exponents match, how do you add them? Is this 3 and 3, 6? Heck no. They match, so x to the third and x to the third gives you x to the third. So to add the 3 and 3, we got 3 because the exponents you match. But the 5 and 2 are regular good old numbers, so when you put them together, you get 7. So you have to get this concept straight. You do the regular good old numbers the way you've always done it. The exponents is what's different. To add regular good old numbers, you add. But to add exponents, you match them. To multiply good regular good old numbers, you multiply. But to multiply exponents, you add them. My goodness, I wonder why people get confused. To multiply, you add. Illustration. What's 8x squared y cubed times 2x to the fifth y to the fifth? Can we do it? Sure. Multiplication is a party animal. 8 times 2 is 16. They're regular good old numbers. But x to the 2 times x to the 5 is x to the 7. And y to the 3 times y to the 5 is y to the 8. Our answer is 16x to the 7th y to the 8. Once again, notice what I've been trying to show you. The 8 and the 2 are regular good old numbers. To multiply them, we get 16. x to the 2 times x to the 5 is x to the 7. 2 times 5 is 7. This 3 times 5 is 8. Why? Because exponents are weirdos. And to multiply them, you add them. But don't mess up the regular good old numbers. Next example. 6xy to the fifth z times 2x to the third y to the third. Can we multiply? Well, don't even think about it. Just do it. You can always do these party animals. 6 times 2 is 12. Okay, take a minute and tell me what to put by the x. What am I multiplying? I'm multiplying x times x to the third. What does that give you? Hopefully you told me x to the 4. You've got to remember there's a 1 here. And how do you do x to the 1 times x to the 3? You've got to add the 1 to the 3. 
So you got to remember that when there's not an exponent show and there's a one there. And x to the one times x to the three is x to the one plus three. But nobody's gonna put that one there, so you gotta remember. All right, how about the y's? y to the five times y to the three is y to the eighth, not y to the 15. It seems like five times three ought to be 15. But y to the five times y to the three is y to the eighth. Y, to multiply it, you add them. Or as the book says, x to the a, times x to the a is equal to x to the 2a. All right, now what do we do with the z? I gotta multiply z times, so what happens is if one of them's got a letter and the other one doesn't have that letter, he just comes along for the ride and you stick it in. So now there's our answer. And that's the first time I did one where there was a letter where it didn't show up in the other one and we need to look at a few more. Plus we need to put the confusion of sign rules into the situation. Multiply. Well, negative 3 times 5 is a negative 15. Please don't tell me 2. These are regular good old numbers that I'm multiplying, which gives me negative 15. x to the 5 times x to the 3 is x to the 8. Think about it. I want you to see. tell me what to put next. What do I put for y? How'd you do? Can you yell it out to me? Well, I hope you yell it out. Yeah, Matt, it's, it's y squared. Why? Because it's y to the 1 times y to the 1, which is y to the 1 plus 1, which is y to the 2. Got to remember about those little 1's up there. But a common mistake here is on the negative 15. Negative 3 times 5, people want to tell me it's 2. That's not right. A pigeon is pigeon toed, and to multiply, you multiply, and that's what you do for regular good old numbers. Hey, George Washington's white horse was white. And to multiply, you multiply. You just do what it says for regular good old numbers. Don't get that part mixed up. A three bag, all multiply. Can you do it? Certainly. Multiplication is a party animal. Let's take care of the regular good old number. What regular good old numbers do I have? Five times two times negative four. Hopefully without blinking, you know that's negative 40. All right, now we've got to multiply the A's. So I got a times a5 times a, which gives me a7, noting that there's a 1 above both of the a's with nothing shown. c3 times c2 times c5 is c10. This gives me 3 of them, 2 of them, and 5 more of them, which gives me a total of 10 of them. z2, z3, z5, that's also going to give me a total of 10. So now I multiply it out, and there's my multiplication. This is pretty easy. You ought to be able to nail this. The problem here is, can you, if you've already not mastered this, which you may have, but if you haven't mastered this, you can see why this causes a problem when you've got to go against something that you've learned all your life. To multiply, you multiply. Uh-uh. For exponents, to multiply, you've got to add. You've got to fight that, and you've got to get used to it. Maybe I guess I got to give credit where credit's due. I think the book's explanation may be better than mine in this case because it's hard to put into words. It says xy to the a is x to the a y to the a. Now what does that mean? It means that if you have a monomial, xy, a multiplication piece, and you're raising the monomial to a power, how do you do it? You got to raise each part. So basically what you got to do is if you got a monomial and you're raising it to a power, you got to power each piece. You got to power each part of the monomial. Maybe I should call it part, since I've called the monomial piece before. So basically, how do you do it? To raise a monomial to a power, you got to power each part. Now let's try that out. So how do you do this? So example. So let's suppose that I got x to the third y. And I want to raise that to the second power. In fact, let's make it xy to the second power. So how do you do xy to the second power? Well, when you take a monomial, this is an all multiply, raise to the second power. You got to raise the x to the second power, and you got to raise y to the second power. So your answer is x to the second, y to the second. That's what this says. To take a monomial and raise it to a power, you got to power each part. All right, that's basically the idea. Let's take another look at that. Let's take another example. So let's suppose that I got uh, 5 
a to the second. How do you raise 5a to the second? You got to raise the 5 to the second, and you got to raise the a to the second. That's what this rule says. If you got a monomial to a power, you got to take each part of it and raise it to that power. A monomial to a power, you power each part. So in this case here, to do this, I got to take the 5 and square it. Notice the 5 is a regular good old number. So the 5 squared is 25. And now you take the a and square it and raise that to a to the 2. Another example. I suppose I got 3xy to the third. So if I got a monomial, which 3xy is, and I want to raise it to the third, what do I got to do? I got to raise the 3 to the third, the x to the third, and the y to the third. Now what is 3 to the third? 3 to the third is 27. It means 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. And that gives me x to the third, y to the third. How do you raise a monomial to a power? You power each part. You raise each part to the power indicated. Now, to truly understand this rule, we have to do it in conjunction with rule four, which I'm about to write. Okay, the fourth rule, how do you raise a power to a power? So if I have something that has a power and I raise it to a power, what do I do? And the book says multiply. To raise the a power to the b power, your answer is the ab power, which means multiply. My rule is, if you look at the power, what do you do? You multiply. So let's take an example of what I mean. It's x to the 5 squared. So notice here, I got the fifth power, and I'm raising it to the second power. And how do you raise a power to a power? You multiply them and get x to the 10. Now, why would people get confused with this? Well, if you were doing 5 squared, that's a regular good old number. How do you power a regular good old number? Well, this thing says I have 5 to base twice as a factor. So this means 5 times 5, which is 25. So in this case here, notice how easy it is to be confused. Sometimes 5 squared is 25. Sometimes 5 squared is 10. When will 5 squared be 10? When 5 is an exponent and I'm raising it to a 2 power. To raise a power to a power, to power, you multiply. That's our, really, our key three rules here are rule 1, 2, and 4. Number 3 is just kind of a technical rule that gets you through an operation. But the three rules that you have to learn is to add them, you match them. To multiply, you add them. And to power, you multiply them. And you need to learn that, and you need to get confused a little bit by it so that you can fight your way through it without thinking where it becomes automatic. That's what I need you to do. I need you to get this so that it's automatic without thinking. Now, let's look at this bottom problem where sometimes 5 squared is 25, and sometimes 5, uh, five squared is 10, and let's really put it into a mode where it's easy to get confused. Let's suppose that I ask you to do 5x to the fifth, and I ask you to square that. Now, how do you do that? Well, the third rule says that, look, we got a monomial here, and we're raising it to a power, a monomial to a power. How do you do that? Well, you got to raise each part to the second power. So I got to take this 5 and square it, and I got to take this x5 and square it. So when you're doing that, the answer is... 25x to the 10. The wonder people get mixed up in math. In the very same problem, 5 squared gives you two different answers. This 5 squared gives you 25. This 5 squared gives you 10. Why? Because this 5 is a regular good old number. So 5 squared means 5 times 5, which is 25. This 5 squared is a power to a power. And how do you do that? You multiply. How do you raise a power to power? You multiply. Now look, you memorize a lot of stuff in your life, some really hard stuff. You know, the Declaration of Independence, some speech that somebody made, the preamble to the Constitution. I mean, you memorize things in Spanish class. I can remember memorizing dialogues that I remember 30, 40 years after I learned them. 
You memorize things that are so hard, they're unbelievable. Here, this is what you got to learn. To add them, you match them. To multiply them, you add them. And to power them, what do you do? You multiply them. And you got to know how to do the rule without thinking. They got to be on automatic pilot. And you got to know how to shift gears. It's like you're doing a car and you got to shift from one gear to the other. Let's say, got the stick on the steering wheel, got to learn how to shift. Ah, boom, 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 let's put it on the floor. We got a stick on the floor, we got to learn how to shift gears. You're doing one thing and then all of a sudden you're doing another one. And all of a sudden you're doing another one. Can you learn this well enough that you do it without thinking, doing it quickly, 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 without any chance of error? Yes, you will. We're going to work on it. We're going to do that. But first, we need to practice this rule some more. So I just need to give you a few more problems where we're practicing rule four in conjunction with rule three. Let's do some. As the old commercial says, hey, this one's for you. So work it for me. So I want you to power 6a6 squared. Okay? And back. If you had a positive tape, do it. So what we got here is we got a we got a monomial raised to a power. So I had to take the six and square it, the a and square it, and the c six and square it. What does this power to? Thirty six a squared c to the twelve. How'd you do? Now there's a couple of places you could have been confused here. The first place is, look, there's the 6 squared, there's the 6 squared again, one time it gives you 36, one time it gives you 12. Were you able to do that? I think you did. To me, if there was a danger here, it was the 2. Say, what is a squared? It's what you just said. What did I say? a squared. That's it, a squared. If you want to get technical, it's a to the 1 raised to the 2. How do you do that? You multiply 1 times 2, which is 2. But the best way is you just write what you said, a squared, 36 a squared, c to the 12. All right, let's try another one. Negative 4 a to the fifth, c, v to the fourth squared. All right, do it. This one's also for you. Go ahead and do it. Pause it if you need to. I'm back. What's the answer? Now the problem here is, notice that that negative 4 is shield from the square with our lead shield. So therefore this is a negative 4 squared. So negative 4 squared means negative 4 times negative 4 which is 16. a to the fifth squared is a to the tenth. c squared is what I just said. And v to the fourth squared is v to the eighth. How do you raise a power to a power? That's how. Now we're going to have some confusion with sign rules, and in a little while we're going to start having negative exponents. We have to see what that means, but we're not quite ready for that. We're going to look at negative exponents soon. But here was a negative in the problem, and it didn't give you a lot of trouble. At the risk of being redundant, this one's for you. 3, a to the third, c, v to the fourth, all raised to the fourth. Do it. I'm back. The big danger here is, do you know what 3 to the fourth is? Now, what is 3 to the fourth? Well, if you've got to do it on a calculator, go ahead. And if you don't know how to do that on the calculator, you're eventually going to need to find out. I may do a tape on calculator. I have to make a decision on that. But it means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. A little tip here, easy way to do this is to raise a number to a fourth is to square it twice. So for example, if you're going to do 3 to the fourth, do 3 squared, which is 9, then do 3 squared, which is 9, and then multiply to 3 squares, which is 81. As opposed to saying 3 times 3 is 9, and then that times 3 is 27, and then that times 3 is 81, Notice it's easier to do 3 to the 4 is 9 times 9. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Hopefully you do. But let's put the answer here. So basically it's 81. Now let's do the easy part. Please notice that if you miss the 81, that's the, yeah, you said it, that's the arithmetic. Math is easier than arithmetic. The arithmetic requires you to get that got to an 81. Now, let's do the easy part, which is the math. To do the math, we've got to raise it to a power, and we've just got to multiply. So I get 
to the 12th. A to the third to the fourth is A to the 12th. This three to the fourth was 81. This three to the fourth is 12. Now, with C to the fourth, I just said it, didn't I? C to the fourth and V to the sixth to the fourth would be a massive problem if that was a regular good old number. But because it's the algebra part of it with our variables, we just put the 24th power. Why? Because to raise the 6th power to the 4th power, all we got to do is multiply. Suppose I had a 6 to the 4th. That would be 6 times 6 times 6 times 6, which to me would be 36 times 36. Help! I need a calculator because arithmetic is harder than math. Okay? Notice the V to the 24 was easy. So math is easier than arithmetic, but you've got to be pretty good at your arithmetic or it'll get in your way. Again, we're doing step three and step four in conjunction with one another.